Hey guys, it's Stan here. In this week's video, we will talk about a highly controversial financial topic, which are share buybacks. So in this video, you will learn what exactly are share buybacks, how do they work, why are companies do share buybacks, and at the end of the day, is it good or is it bad? So you know what? Let's find out. First of all, let's start with the basics. So what exactly are share buybacks? So first of all, very basic, what are shares? Well, shares and stocks are exactly the same. And when you buy and own a share or a stock, you become, uh, you are buying ownership of a company. To give you a very simple example, if today you decide to buy one stock or one share of Amazon, you become a very little tiny part owner of Amazon. Um, now let's look at the investors. What can an investor do? Well, an investor can buy or sell stocks on a stock exchange. That makes a lot of sense. And companies can do exactly the same. They can uh, either issue new shares, which means basically selling shares, or they can buy their own shares back. So this seems very not logical and doesn't really make sense. And we will talk about the why they do it in a second. But first of all, I want to explain you exactly how it works. So here in the first example, you see we have three parties. We have the company, we have the stock market, and we have the investor. Here we are always talking about public companies, so big companies that are listed on a stock exchange, such as uh, the, Dow or the, the Nasdaq, for example, in the US. So uh, think about Apple, for example. So imagine a company Apple, uh, you have the stock market and you have an investor. So in the first case, the company issues new shares, meaning they are selling Apple shares, for example, on a stock exchange, which is the intermediate platform, and the investor can decide to buy some shares here. In the second example, and that's what we're gonna look at today, is um, a company can decide to buy back its own shares also on a stock exchange. And for that, obviously, you need investors who sell Apple shares, for example, so that Apple can buy back its own shares. So now that we roughly understand um, the mechanism, let's quickly look at the balance sheet, what is happening, and then we will look at the why companies do it. The goal of a company uh, for share buybacks is to reduce the numbers of shares of my own company, for example, Apple, uh, which are openly available on the stock market. So how do I do that? Uh, I just mentioned it. The company buys back its own shares, meaning some investor has to sell to them. So what does it mean exactly in a balance sheet? Uh, let's quickly look at it. In my balance sheet, I have assets and I have liabilities. Assets is everything that I own, for example, my own cash. And liabilities on the other side is everything that I owe to someone. For example, I owe debt to a bank and I owe equity uh, to my investors who have trusted in me and who are awaiting uh, uh, future returns. So uh, when I do a share buyback, the goal is, is to reduce the equity. So how do I reduce the equity or what is equity? It's the number of shares times the price of shares. So uh, th this gives you equity and the goal here of share buybacks is to reduce um, equity. Let's imagine we want to reduce equity by 10. So how do you do that? Um, well, you have to find a way because they're just, in a balance sheet, there are two ways how you can pay for something, either with your own cash, in this case it would be minus 10 here, and you have a perfect balance, or if, I'm, if I do not have enough cash, I need uh, to raise some debt, and with this debt, I will pay back uh, my investors. So now that you know what share buybacks is, let's try to understand why companies do that. So now the big question, why are share buybacks so popular by companies and why are companies using them all the time? Well, let's find out. Uh, the first and most important reason is to reward shareholders, aka investors. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, let's look at this. First of all, imagine I am a company, let's say Apple, and I made huge profits last year. What can I do with my profits? Uh, actually, it's pretty simple. Either I keep my profits and reinvest them in my activity, 
in other terms, I'm looking for good projects that would give me uh, a future advantage, uh, innovation, for example. Here we have a great uh, textbook scenario, which is Amazon. Amazon never distributes their profits. They keep them for themselves in, inside the company and they reinvest it uh, in future projects. And that's how actually the stock price climbed a lot because well, they, are, they do a lot of innovation, Amazon. Um, then this is not the point. Uh, the point is, what do you do when you distribute your profits? There are two ways you can distribute your profits, either by the very famous dividends or by the share buyback. So what's the difference and why are share buy buybacks so popular? Um, when you distribute dividends to shareholders, of course, that means you are giving money back to the guys who trusted you in the first place. Um, but it's kind of a heavy duty work because um, you are not saying, oh, you know what, let's distribute some dividends. You need a board res resolution, you need a long term strategy. So it's a bit complicated because you need, a, yeah, as I just mentioned, a dividend strategy, which is usually driven also by long term legacy. I give you an example. If you are a big oil company, for example, usually you have distributed dividends, let's say 20 percent of your profits each year since World War II or something like that. And in 2020, with the big pandemic, when the oil prices dropped, a lot of oil majors had to cut uh, the percentages of, of profits they gave out to investors, and uh, th that dropped uh, the stock price a lot. So when you are changing your dividend strategy, especially when you are dropping dividends long term, or for this year, uh, you get hammered by the stock price. So that's why uh, here dividends is a good way to do it, but it's very heavy duty, long term strategy. So you need to be very careful. And that's why actually share buybacks became very popular um, because it's a very easy tool to give money back to your um, investors. Uh, because don't forget that when you buy back shares from your investors, in other words, you are returning cash to them. So that's very easy to set up such a package if you want. And it's also forgiven if it's not cancelled. In other words, if you promise to do share buybacks and return money to investors, and at the end of the day, let's say two months later, you are not doing it, of course, it's not great for you, but it's, you're not going to get hammered with your stock price the same way as with the dividends, because share buybacks are much more flexible and investors know that what has been cancelled or delayed today can happen tomorrow. So the first reason was very much related to the investor. The second reason I am showing you right now is not related to the investor, but is related to the company itself, or let's say to the top executives of the company. The second reason here is incentives for top managers. What do I mean by that? As you all know, uh, top managers have a basic salary and a lot of salary, which is flexible and related usually to the stock price, Managers get stock options that are linked to the stock price and also to the earnings per share, EPS. So what does it mean and what's the relationship with share buybacks? Well, share buybacks have the tendency to increase the stock price because investors like, obviously, to get cash back, right? Everybody wants that. So it's pushing the stock price at least a little bit. What is interesting for managers is imagine uh, my stock price was at 20 and then I'm announcing that my share buybacks, uh, that I'm doing a share buybacks package this year. Let's imagine my stock price is jumping from 20 to 30. Then maybe I'm going to hit a certain threshold where I can cash in my stock options as a manager and make a lot of money, obviously, in the short term. And the second thing is the earnings per share, which is also related to uh, dilution in general. Uh, let me explain. So earnings per share is nothing more than earnings, so net profits of a company, divided by the numbers of shares. So little magic trick here. Um, of course, when you're doing share buybacks, it means you're buying back your own shares. In other words, what is the goal of share buybacks? To reduce the numbers of shares, as I just mentioned before. So when we look at this little thing here, imagine my earnings are still the same, obviously but the number of shares are decreasing because I'm doing share buybacks and I'm destroying the shares I just bought, then of course um, the difference here, well uh, the EPS, is that the earnings per share is going up, 
because the number of shares are going down. So that's another uh, thing that's going to trigger bonuses and that could be very interesting for managers from an incentive point of view. Another big question guys, are share buybacks good or bad? Well, let's look at it and I would say it's a mixed bag. As I just mentioned earlier, um, share buybacks are definitely more efficient and flexible to return cash to investors than dividends. Uh, dividends you need a real, really long term strategy and if you are pushing the strategy down, meaning if you are reducing the dividends, well you get hammered by the stock market. So um, share buybacks definitely return some flexibility to companies, uh, how they deal with how should they uh, pay out uh, the profits. So that, that's definitely a good thing, more flexibility. Uh, another good thing, let's say, from an employee or from a top manager point of view is that, of course, share buybacks push the stock prices and so it's easier to um, reach higher stock prices and also manager bonuses. So from a manager point of view, it's interesting. Um, now, and also what is also interesting is it favors remaining long-term investors. What do I mean by that? Uh, when you are doing share buybacks, you are reducing the number of existing shares. If I am an investor and I have not sold my shares, well, I keep a bigger part, a uh, bigger piece of the pie if you want. So if, in the long term, if I'm a long term investor, it's going to be a good thing if the company performs well in the future. Now, let's look at the bad things. First of all, um, share buybacks, and that's why they are so, so controversial, especially in 2020. Uh, they should be banned and they have been banned when companies are in bad shape. i give you an example. Look at all the, the airlines and these companies who were really struggling in 2020 and got a lot of uh, government money. Of course, it should be banned to do share buybacks in such a situation when the company is in, in struggle. Because when the company is in struggle and the, co and the government pushes money inside, this money should, should be there to... Uh, rejuvenate the company to invest inside to innovate it should not be there uh, to pay out to investors that's a very important point and that's why it's so critical especially this year and then of course um, another negative part is is it's controversial because it's very short-term thinking you know um you can push the stock price short term but in the long term if you are burning all your cash or even if you're getting into debt because you are paying back your, in, uh, your investor, that's definitely a bad thing. So now you know the goods and the bads of share buybacks. I think you have a pretty good image. I wanted to tell you that I post once a week every Sunday. So if you like that kind of stuff, uh, corporate finance, market finance, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to like this video. It takes me about six, seven hours to do, to edit, produce and stuff like that. So uh, I wanted to tell you, <laughs> enjoy, have a great week, see you soon guys, bye bye.